planners and bullet journals, art journals, art projects, organized planner chic. Well, hello everyone and welcome to Organized Planner Chic. I'm Lucinda and if you haven't subscribed already, please do so and select the bell for notifications. Well, first I want to thank all my Patreon members who help make it possible to create videos like this. Well, thank you guys so much. And if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, just go to patreon.com slash organized planner chic. Okay, you guys, welcome to part two of this Dollar Tree DIY where we're making traveler's notebooks with only Dollar Tree supplies. So if you haven't seen part two, be sure and check that out because that's where we did the whole base. And now we're doing the pockets and putting everything else together. So the first thing you want to do is take that third um, fabric placemat because remember we had to have three and you're going to fold it in half and we're going to make what we called it at boot camp a recruit <laughs> a, well we didn't call it recruit crease we, we said we were using our recruit iron so because we didn't have an iron at boot camp when I was in the Navy we uh, would just kind of fold the clothes after we washed them and we would use our hands to really press in to create a crease and so that's kind of what we did only we used a bone folder and the reason why or you don't have to have a bone folder again like I said in part one you can also use the back of some scissors or the handle of some scissors or the handle of a butter knife like a regular knife you have at the dinner table and so that just makes a real nice crease that you can easily cut. Now you don't have to do that. You could just kind of fold it or measure and use a pen or a pencil. But this was perfect because there's no pencil or pen to worry about, even though it wouldn't really show up in this project at all. But I just thought it was really cool and it reminded me of my boot camp experience. So we're just cutting that in half and I just put my cell phone and a little container on either side to um, hold them down so I didn't have to pin any thing or whatever and so then we're just going to fold those in half so we're going to take those two halves and fold them um, just like they are vertically because I think they were too short to fold uh, horizontally to fit on our base so yeah so we're going to fold those and I'm just checking to make sure it's about uh, going to line up like I think I want it to Excuse me, I got a little bit of allergy drainage there. <laughs> and because we need to, um, I'm going to be, well actually I think I decided first to go ahead and glue that. So we're going to fold that over to make the pocket and since it's folded over we need to glue that together. And then after that, then we're going to glue that pocket onto the base. So I did decide to pull out finally my cutting board that I use for my craft craft projects to take care of all the glue that's going to be spilling over and everything because on part one I didn't and periodically I had to wipe stuff up. I think I probably had to wipe some things down in here too. Um, but in any case at this point I did bring it out to catch up the glue. You can use you know some newspaper or you can use some tarp or some plastic. I like to use this cutting board because I can just reuse it over and over and I just wipe it up when I'm done. And so now I'm just placing it uh, back there on the base. I'm going to use some binder clips. So you will need some, some binder clips for this part two to finish our project. And you're going to need a lot of them at the end. So it'll definitely save you some time if you have some big ones. Um, but we're going to need a lot for to go all the way around at the end. So you might want to run to the store if you don't already have quite a few big ones or tons of smaller ones. So we're just going to use the binder clips to hold it in place so we can cut the excess. Yeah. And then when we start cutting, it's going to be just like we did on the part one video where you want to angle your scissors so that you don't have too much excess to have to trim later. You just kind of get underneath there slightly to cut what you need to cut. There we go. Snip, snip, snip. All right, and that should be perfect. And we'll be able to use that now as the template for the other pocket because we know 
exactly how long we need it to be. And you know, it's, you, may, you may find it interesting with this video that I didn't really use a, a ruler for anything. I will at one point later on, but I just kind of use these self-made templates or self, you know, provided options to uh, measure things. You don't always need a ruler when you don't have to be 100% precise. So yeah, so yeah, that's gonna fit just nicely. Man, I just, sometimes on certain projects, I just wanna feel them all the time. <laughs> I just like the way they feel. Look at me, it's like, girl, I was just messing with it. Um, you know, feeling the flexibility of it. Okay, so here we go, back with our pocket. Yes, that's gonna fit just fine. And I was checking right here to make sure that it wasn't too wide because I'm gonna need to have elastic in the center and elastic about half an inch to the right and to the left of the center. And I wanted to make sure I still would have plenty of room to slide things into the pocket. So at first I was just feeling it and how nice it feels, but then I was actually looking at where the center was and making sure that I had enough room to add the inserts and that everything would fit comfortably and not be, you know, a struggle. So now we can take that one. And this time, I think I found that um, when I folded the other piece, so remember I had one big piece, it was a rectangle, I cut that in the middle, so we had two sides of the rectangle and they were a little tall. I found after I cut one and measured it, you know, and cut it to fit inside the Traveler's Notebook base that the other one, if I turned it the other way, if I turned it around horizontally, it was just about the perfect height. It was still too wide though, but it was just about the perfect height. So it really didn't matter. I could have turned it either way and just trimmed either the width or turned it the other way and trimmed the height. So in this case, I just trimmed the width and um, lined it up there. And then I just took a ruler to make it easy to trace the width that I needed to cut. I just laid the ruler onto the edge on the right side. Right, What I'm doing there on the left is just making sure I'm all the way to the edge and not too far. So I'm just laying the ruler there and then I'll take the pencil and mark where I'm going to need to cut. And funny enough, the lid wasn't out far enough. So it didn't actually mark any pencil on that place where I needed to cut, but because of the pressure, it was a really nice indentation and I could still see where I needed to cut that piece. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that right there. I guess I turned it around, looks like, <laughs> and cut it from that side. And you know, it, everything works out easier if you take your time. So the faster I know for me that I cut something or draw something, whatever the case may be when I'm doing things with my hands, it's better for me to go slow. So if I see that I'm messing up or I'm going the wrong direction, that I can usually recover. But if I go too fast, sometimes it's like, oh, I'm gonna have to start that all over again. And who wants to do that? <laughs> all right, so right here, I'm just making sure that they were I was making sure that they were about the same size, which they were. Okay, and then it's time to glue all four sides, put glue on all four sides to glue this together. So I need to do that. I, I could have just cut like one half of that and made, the po made that the pocket, but I liked that it was thicker because again, I wanted this Traveler's Notebook to be nice and strong and just really feel like it's got a lot of good definition and so I decided to glue those two um, sides together completely and it also gave me a nice rounded pocket on the side that the you know that I'm gonna stick stuff into so I like that and I did still after this this project I still had some scrap fabric that I'm gonna use for all types of ephemera and things so yeah and then, of course, I like to use my bone folder to really give pressure, put pressure on all of the edges to make sure that everything adheres very nicely. 
and then I'm just wiping off my bone folder with a damp rag. So that's another thing you should have. I recommend having in place is a damp rag to help you wipe up extra glue um, or anything, any spills um, from putting the glue down or from it coming off the edges of your project. It helps a lot. And then I'm just putting pressure all around to make sure I've got that glue spread really well and that everything can really adhere very well and that I just feel secure as I feel it, not just by looking. So see right here, I've got a, spa a space that needs some extra glue. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on there. And the more I use the glue, like I said in part one, the harder it got to squeeze out. And at some point I did learn, like right here, I laid it down horizontally instead of um, standing it up and that definitely made it easier. But after I got down to like 25% or, or maybe a little less, um, it got harder and harder. So I switched to the other bottle. And I don't remember if I said in the first video that I recommend having two bottles of that. Definitely two bottles of the Mod Podge if you're gonna use the um, Mod Podge at all for the project. Cause it was easier to use Mod Podge whenever I was gluing from the fabric to the cardboard. So yeah, and you probably don't need to for that, you know, I'm pretty positive you don't need to for that because I, yeah, I don't think so. Well, no, let's say, <laughs> let's go ahead and get two just in case. You don't want to be short. It's better to have more because I mean, hey, we're crafters. We're going to use it at some point, right? So here I just took a scrap from trimming um, and did I, no, I think I must not have showed that on camera. I took uh, well, I did take a piece from the extra from whenever we trimmed the pockets and then I cut that to be about the size that I thought I would need to have my pin holders, my pin loops, because I'm going to have two pin loops, one toward the top on the front of the cover and one under that, a little under that on the back of the cover. And so then I just took that little piece and I cut another one from the scraps. And so one side of it, well, two sides of it, you know, aren't stitched. So I'm just taking my little beautiful, sharp little pair of pink scissors from Dollar Tree to cut the excess that's sticking out. I love those scissors. They are so nice. I only saw one. I think I only saw one even the day that I bought those. So maybe they'll come out, well, you know, you never know, one store may have plenty of them, but um, if I see them again, I'm definitely going to get some. Okay, so yeah, I'm just getting the excess off of that, and then I'll do the same thing on the other one. Yeah, so now I'm just going to take the glue, this nice crafter's glue, nice tacky crafter's glue, and I like it so much better for this project than the tacky glue that comes in the gold bottle that we get from Dollar Tree. Um, I like the white little bottle of tacky glue uh, even better than that tacky glue as well. But I like this the most for this project because it's nice and tacky. I mean, it's, it's the most tacky, so you know it's really going to hold. Um, the only thing I don't like is that it gets harder to squeeze out the bottle. I wish they made bigger bottles of that, but I get it because it is a dollar and you know, you can't just get the best of everything for a dollar. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't mind getting two bottles at all. So I just have to remember to put it down horizontally more often so that I can get better use of what is in the bottle. So yeah, I'm just making sure I get that all the way around nice and smooth that I don't have any rough edges if I need to trim it in any place that I feel like it's not really holding secure to um, to do that and by the way I did let everything dry for all of these different stages that we've looked at so far before I went on to the next stage so keep that in mind you might need to pause for some of those drying spells um, you can use a hair dryer if you have one of those tools I forget what you call it that dryer for crafting um, that's like a hair dryer you can use that as well because it doesn't take that long to dry it's so hot it's so hot and dry it's more dry than hot here in the Phoenix Metro right now um, 
that things dry pretty quickly this time of the year so I usually just set it out on the patio so then you want to take it and fold it and kind of measure I went by the stitching I counted the number of stitches for how far I wanted the glue to go for me to glue it closed because of course I still needed space to put the pins in or pencil or whatever I'm using that's gonna go inside the loop and so I just um, you know measured that not with the ruler or anything but just by looking how wide the stitching was and then I put glue in there yeah and of course I'm gonna put pressure and I'm gonna do that for both of them and I think I lost a little tiny bit of footage that shows when I put the other one in but I did it the same way and you see me pressing to make sure I have a wide enough space there for the pin to go and then I just wanted to figure out where exactly as I get this glue coming out <laughs> I'll be figuring out where exactly I want to place the um, pin loop so I can figure out where I want to place the other one and so I definitely recommend that what you do is that you figure out where you want the other one to go the first one to go and then you know kind of close it close the traveler's notebook and look and see put your pins up against it and everything put the little pieces of fabric and lay them down there maybe even mark it with a pencil or a pen if you need to to see to make sure that you place them where you want them to go and not just go gluing and then find out later oh my gosh this pin loop is too high or this pin loop is way too low and when I put my pin in it's like hanging down and or gosh this just doesn't work so you know take your time so here I've, I've placed them on there and they're dry oh actually I didn't worry about when I glued the pin loops actually to the base I didn't wait for them to dry because I figured I'm getting ready to glue the pockets in here now I'll just do that all at one time so um, so I'm just trimming a little bit of excess from the pockets That's what I was doing right there and now you have to remember to only glue three sides of this okay otherwise you're not going to have a pocket so I'm going to not glue the folded part and the one mistake I made oh my gosh I wish I had not made is I wanted the pockets to be as big as they look like they are the opening to be as big as it looks like it is but I didn't think about this when I used my template um, when I make traveler's notebooks that I hand stitch then it's no problem at all the pocket is going to be as big as it looks like it is but for gluing I needed to make sure that I glued it as close to the edges as absolutely possible I mean like no as close to the end as possible which is fine because we're going to be adding glue at the end all the way around to make sure everything is secure but I put the glue too far in like I went about a quarter of an inch into the fabric to put the glue and you have to remember once you press the glue is going to spread and so it's going to cover more area than you think it is so it's really important if you want to maximize the size of that pocket to put the glue as close to the edge as you can um, and don't worry about it because we're going to be putting even more glue later on so yeah and the reason why I mean it's not a big deal because I can of course still use the pockets there's still plenty of use in those pockets but I wanted to use this particular traveler's notebook to put in a bullet journal inside the pockets like I wanted the cover front cover of the bullet journal to go inside the first pocket on the left and I wanted the back of it um, to go into the pocket on the right but there wasn't enough room because I glued it too far in so yeah because I definitely put my travelers my bullet journals inside of a5 travelers notebooks and then I use when I'm finished with that bullet journal because I switch travelers notebooks for the different seasons the ones that cover my bullet journals when I when it's a new season I switch to another traveler's notebook and then I use all of my elastics to put other inserts that fit inside an A5 so all of my A5 traveler's notebooks that aren't currently holding my bullet journal that I'm using right now have lots of inserts in them but when I'm using a bullet journal the current one that I like to use a traveler's notebook and again I switch I have one for the fall one for the um, 
winter and one for the spring. This one is the one for the summer. So I didn't have a summer one. I was just using the same one for spring and summer. Yeah. So I can still use that bullet journal inside this traveler's notebook. I just can't use it as a folio. I can't have it, the covers inside the pockets. I just have to thread one of the elastics into the bullet journal, which you'll see later, which is kind of a pain sometimes because sometimes the elastic doesn't want to go all the way through that space that's in the back of a bullet journal and you'll see how it's in the elastic um, at the end but in any case yeah so my point again was to if you want to maximize that pocket make sure you put the glue as close to the edge as you can so yeah I'm just rubbing everything in making sure it's secure so remember when you put that glue in there it's gonna spread as you put pressure. Yeah, it's so pretty, y'all. Don't you think it's pretty? I'm so excited, I love it. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. I kinda wish I had gone ahead and gotten the blue and green, um, uh, what do you call these, gosh? Placemats, fabric placemats as well, because if I go back now, they might not even be there. But if they are, I'm gonna get some, and I'm gonna go ahead and make another one. If you remember for part one, I didn't get that material, or I didn't get those placemats because I already have an A5 Traveler's Notebook in with blue and green floral print, which is what this has. It's not the same print, but you know, it's the same color scheme. But it's so pretty. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just pressing all the way around the pockets just giving it some more pressure feeling. If I think something needs more glue, I'm gonna be putting more glue all around anyway, but I'm just putting pressure, just wanting to feel confident that I've done a good job so far. And now what I'm gonna do is uh, pull out a bunch of binder clips, a bunch. <laughs> I used a whole bunch at this point and then later on I pulled out the whole tray because I used all but one of the clips that I have. So first I'm going to put extra glue all the way around the pockets and I'm going to squeeze it in there. Sometimes I probably use too much but that's okay. It's better to have too much than not enough. And I'm just spreading it with my finger making sure that I got it in there because we want this to last. And I don't know, there's just something therapeutic about making things with your hands. I just, I could get lost in one project and think about nothing else. <laughs> Concern myself with nothing else. It's just, I don't know. I just, it kind of makes me think about God and how he is the master craftsman and he made the heavens and the earth and of course it took him an instant to do it. He just spoke it, but still it's his handiwork and about how Jesus was a carpenter and he made things. That makes me feel kind of proud <laughs> that I share that aspect of him, that you and I, that we share that characteristic of him, of of making things and I wonder if it felt how it felt for him since he, he didn't worry and he didn't have anxiety and things like that I wonder if it was just always just a pleasant experience that he wasn't you know I know he wasn't looking to do it because he needed to not deal with something which you know that's not why we don't want to escape things but um, because it helped him relax his mind or if it made him just just appreciate the creator more maybe maybe he just celebrated that when he made things I don't know so what I'm doing um, here is just putting clips all the way around the pockets um, to hold to really put some pressure on the glue because I definitely don't want those pockets to ever come apart <laughs> and I don't want there to be places that gap later on where I come to see that oh that this wasn't glued down very well so I'm trying to be careful to really put the clips where I think the glue would most benefit from that pressure not just like push the clips all the way down that's not the point the point is to press down where I need to put pressure on the glue to make sure it, it really does well to hold. And I'm just gonna do that all the way around. 
Yeah. So, you guys, I don't know if I, did I tell you in the first video? No, I think I told you guys in the first video, reminding you that I had, um, had the really bad salivary gland infection and then they thought I might have had Sjogren syndrome. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I think it's S-J-O-G-R-E-N-S -E syndrome. Um, and um, they did a test and I don't have it. Okay, which is good, but they still are having me go back and do more blood work <laughs> to try to figure out why I have other little things like low white blood cell count and anemia, which I've had anemia as long as I can remember. Um, but that low blood cell count used to go up and down and now it's steadily lower. It's always low and they don't know why, but, um, so anyway, I'm going to try to look at that because I've had more issues with fatigue. I actually feel a little better now. Maybe it just took a lot longer for me to get over that infection because it was bad. It was bad. Oh my gosh, it was horrible. Um, yeah, so anyway, so you guys can keep me in, my, in your prayers about that. And let me know if I can pray for anything for you as well. Today is Thursday, and I'm feeling super happy that the week is almost over. I feel like I've worked, I don't know, like crazy this week. But, um, but I am definitely praying for everyone who has not been able to go back to work if you don't work away from home. So I am definitely praying for all you guys and for everyone around the world dealing with this pandemic. So yeah, I just got one area left. And I hope if you're doing this with me, you're not rushing this. Um, make sure you get plenty of glue on there and that you're rubbing it in and putting pressure and, um, and putting your binder clips where you think they're needed most. And yeah, sometimes I put too much glue and it would kind of spill over, but don't worry about that. I would just take my hand or a rag and get the excess off. Um, it was never too much where I had to worry about it looking bad if it dried because sometimes, I think I mentioned this in the first video at the end, there might've been little uh, areas that had a really super thin layer of glue um, where it wouldn't otherwise be like not along the edge and it was so easy to just kind of flick off with my fingernail and it wasn't really visible I just saw it because I was up really close of course <laughs> inspecting all of my work and so here at this point I'm down to my itty bitty <laughs> binder clips and I think I just had one left of those when um, when I got finished and I was kind of spacing it out trying to make sure I got pressure on as much of that of those edges as I possibly could and then after I did that I let it sit outside until it was completely dry okay now it's all dry and I'm taking the clips off and just feeling and sometimes there might have been a little bit of like I said a glue I could flick or just a tiny little big bit of areas where glue just kind of gathered together where I could kind of pull it off. Sometimes I had to um, finagle it off because the, the glue kind of stuck on there. So I so be really careful. Don't just yank it because you don't want to damage anything. So um, just pull those little extras because we're going to go around. I think I went around and trimmed one more time if I thought I needed to. Yeah, there's my little scissors. So um, I saw a couple of areas that I felt like I should just trim. So they'd be nice and neat and if I could just pull the little extra glue off I did if not I just trimmed it just felt and looked to make sure everything looked nice and of course you don't have to do that I just like for this stuff that's that perfectionism in me there's still some in there but I don't stress out like I used to I mean if it's not perfect it's not perfect I just do the best I can and um, yeah, I'm just flicking a little bit of glue off of that. Yeah, so exciting. So nice to see something come together because y'all, I don't be knowing <laughs> if these projects are going to turn out like I envision them, you know. I just find out as I get to going. But yeah, we're almost done. And I'm just going to clip all those little excess pieces. All those little things that are sticking out now it's a folio yeah so if you have something that fits in 
um, then you can just stick it in there. Okay, so now I want to mark where I'm going to put my holes for my traveler's notebook for the elastic. And so I just measured the length of it, and I'm, which was about nine inches, and then I marked it at about four and a half inches to put my hole that's going to put the elastic all the way around. And then to put in, mark the other holes, I just took my ruler and made sure that it was measured along the fold. I made sure that, well, first I'm going to go ahead and do this hole. So I don't have a big shot or whatever you call it, not a big shot. It's like a crocodile thing. You can get them at Joann's that punches holes for you and it can even punch a hole there in the center. Eventually I need to get one of those. Um, and you can get the ones that will put the grommets in or eyelets for you um, at the top as well. And at some point I'm going to get that, but until then I have awls. So I use my little awl to just get the hole in there um, because it's sharper. And then I use the bigger awl. I got the little awl from Hobby Lobby back when they used to carry those. I don't think they do anymore. At least I haven't been able to find them anymore. And then the big one I got at Lowe's. Um, but um, you can use a nail. You can use um, the thing that you use to for making, oh, what do you call it? For making grommet holes, there's a tool that you can get from Hobby Lobby. Um, so anything sharp and then just a bigger thing, like a bigger nail or something to make the hole bigger so that your elastic can run, especially that middle hole because you've got two elastics going to go through there, both to wrap around and the top middle hole. And so the two, so I made sure I use my ruler to make sure my holes were all positioned um, parallel to each other. I made sure that they they were along the fold and then to the right and to the left of the center holes at the top and the bottom I measured half an inch of distance um, so that each hole was half an inch from the center hole and then I just did the same thing with my awls can't see it right there sorry about that to make sure I got them nice big so my elastic could run through and then I oh and let me tell you I didn't show you how to run the elastic through to make this video shorter because I have a separate video that I've had from for some time that shows you how to run your elastic for your traveler's notebooks when you want have to have three inserts in there okay but this is the final project that everything is from Dollar Tree so those bees I have that extra elastic hanging that happens whenever you insert a bullet journal inside of a traveler's notebook and you'll see that in a moment and so I took those two pieces and I put beads from Dollar Tree so the left is the little plastic beads and to the right are the wooden beads and right there I'm just showing you the little tail mermaid tail it was in that light pink pom-pom that I got from Dollar Tree and I just cut it out. I was just very careful to get down in there and cut it out because I didn't like the way it looked. Didn't think it went with this aesthetic. <laughs> and the other hot pink uh, pom-pom I got from Dollar Tree as well. So all of that, the only thing that's not from Dollar Tree is the elastic. They sometimes sell crafting elastic but it's not strong enough. It's really thin. So you see my pen loops and you see my pocket. Yeah, so the pocket again, you can see where it stopped because of the glue. Where my finger is, is where the top of the opening is for the pocket. Right in there. <laughs> and then right down in there. But I'll be putting stuff in there. So it's about an inch and a half. Yeah, maybe about an inch and a half from the top and the bottom is where the glue, how far the glue went. And so there, see my bullet journal is inside the first elastic, and then I've got three other elastics in there. But I'll use all four of them when I'm finished with that. That's the new bullet journal I'm getting ready to go into. I'm finishing up one. There's the other pocket. Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already like and comment and share also check me out on instagram at organized planner chic where i post all of my fun pictures i have two facebook groups the local one is called phoenix planner friends for christ so check that out if you're in the local area and then the one for anyone around the world is called organized planner chic crew and there we do giveaways and we try to stay in touch all the time with posts and if you're interested in supporting me on patreon just go to patreon.com slash organized planner chic and until next time, happy planning!